What's up guys, Safi on Super Saf Speaks and welcome to episode number 38 of the podcast with myself, your host, Super Saf, and my co-host... Thunder E from Board at Work. Took a break last month because uh, I had uh, Samsung's James Kitto on <laughs> as I a mean, guest. I mean, you know what? It's fair. It's fine. I will be, I'll play second fiddle. But it was a busy month though. It was. It was very busy. And we had the launch of the new Samsung devices, which we're going to be talking about today. We've got the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6. We've been using them for, I mean, can, can we round it off to a month? It's been about three and a bit weeks. Let's say we've been <laughs> yeah. using them for a month. Yeah, and then uh, we just, so, you know, that's something that they, we could definitely, we've got lots of thoughts around that. The Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, right? Now I've been, I'm currently have those plugged in for me right now. And then Enabong's done, you've actually had them for longer than most people. So that's uh, yeah. something I've interesting. Had it, I'm, I've had I'm it allowed for to say about, that. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I'm playing my, I'm, I'm, I'm showcasing my inner Marquez. You know, I've had it for a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had it for a couple of weeks. Uh, Galaxy Ring. So again, we both had the Galaxy Rings. Oh, you've got it on your wedding finger as well. Check no, 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 no. This, this is the side. wedding ring, <laughs> the other side. Okay, but I mean, as in the um, oh yeah, the right. In rather yeah, than exactly. index finger. All right, so we'll talk about that. And then finally, we're going to try something which might fail. Uh, but we're going to be trying to do the Apple Vision Pro. We're going to try to do a Persona uh, call, and then that part of the podcast will be on that. So, uh, and we can talk about our experience because I've had it for, uh, you know, coming towards like uh, over a month now, and you've had it for about six or seven. Yeah, I've had it for, for a while. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll see. There, there's, there's lots to talk about. Let's initially talk about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 or Z Fold 6, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we both switched to it um, when it was released. Are you, have you, are you still using it as your daily or have you switched back? No, I'm still using it as a daily. Uh, okay. I actually don't have any of my phones here. <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to show it, but I, I do. They're all downstairs. <laughs> do, do, don't, don't worry, we'll, we'll throw some B-roll in there. <laughs> and to throw some B-roll quickly, <laughs> cover this up. <laughs> um, so I actually used it um, and there was a lot that I liked about it. So I did cover this in my um, my review, which was a different type of review. It wasn't a traditional review that you would um, have of a, you know, like a, 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 like I normally would do a review. It was more about what I think Samsung needs to change, right? Now, mm -hmm. initially, let's just talk about why, what we like, right? Um, I like the fact that you've got seven years of software updates, um, which, you know, you're not gonna find on any of the foldable. I do like the refinements, even though it's not a drastic design change. I like the flatter edges, you know, kind of goes in line with the Note series that we've had. Um, I like the matte finish around the sides. I like the software features. The AI features are, are quite fun. Like I've had so much fun just, you know, changing people's outfits on pictures and things like that, right? And just to mention on a side note, um, I was a little bit concerned about the uh, terms and conditions about, you know, what happens to those images and what right Samsung has. Uh, I did ask Samsung question. They've clarified that anything that you generate through something like sketch to image, those images you still own. Um, Samsung just has the rights to edit them, which they need to do to apply these AI filters. But once that's done, I mean, you own that image. They can't go around doing crazy things with it. So they have confirmed that with me, which is good. Thank God. Because <laughs> before I was kind of like, because I was reading the content terms and I was like, hmm, this, this sounds kind of shady because... Um, to me, it seemed like they could pretty much do what they wanted with those pictures, but that doesn't that doesn't apply to um, the generative AI stuff. That applies to more to stuff that you would publish, because yeah. then they do need the rights to publish that on their website if you publish something, um, you know, within the Samsung uh, platform. So that's that, that's just something to clarify, which was quite good. But yeah, I have I have actually really enjoyed those features, and um, it's been it's been a lot of fun using the device from that perspective. What about you? What do you um, like? Let's, let's start with like. the positives. I do like the refinements. I, I think that even it's, you know, uh, just the the way the edges are holding the phone, the weight, the weight is quite noticeable on it. And even the thinness, like it's not as super, super thin like, you know, some of the Chinese manufacturers, but it's still thin and mm. it feels comfortable to hold. Um, I like the battery life. Uh, for me, that was also quite impressive with it. Um, okay. I think I think the cameras uh, have been solid too as well because I actually used it. Um, 
I went from Paris to London. So, you know, taking photos and stuff like that uh, mm -hmm. was pretty good. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised with the refinements because once I saw the leaks, I was like, Ugh. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, you know, the refinements won me over to actually make my very first I switched video because I really haven't done that before. And I wanted to, I wanted to, to, to kind of jump in and try and use You just it. wanted the views. Stop, 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 stop making that is, all this that up, is man. You just true. wanted the views. Not, <laughs> you see, look, like, guys, guys, they, they haven't listened to Saf at all. He's, <laughs> Saf is just hating, just plain hate. That's it. Uh, that, that's not true. That's not true. But yeah, um, I'll say, I'll say those are the things. Yeah. And the views. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly the views, because this is what I do, because I, I actually been doing this as a tradition since the, you know, I'd say the first fold pretty much is that every year I switch to the fold and I use it like properly, not like just like I put my SIM card into it and I use it, you know, I actually switch off my other phone. Like, so my S24 which was switched off and it was one of my primary folds. So I can really feel how it is. So when I sway, I say I'm switching, I'm actually not lying. I am switching to it. I didn't do that last year. And that was because I didn't feel that there were enough improvements, right? So I did not switch to the fold. So I didn't use that. <laughs> my actual title was why I'm not switching. But anyway, I agree with some of your points, but um, you know, the, the, the things that I mentioned in my review video, uh, firstly was the front cover screen. It's still not yeah. wide enough for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, it's okay for your day to day, but um, it's just way too narrow. Um, I kind of found myself having to open the main screen up more, right? Which I know a lot of people are going to say that's the, that's the whole point of it. But my, my sort of the way I use it, and you can you can uh, uh, let me know if that's how you use it as well. For me, and the ideal foldable is for my day to day when I'm just doing some crack casual scrolling through social media, when I'm responding to my messages and things like that, I'm happy to use it as just a regular smartphone, right? Now, when I want to game, when I want to do some multitasking, when I want to email, right? Then I open it up. When I want to see some images, when I will use the S Pen and I want to use that canvas, right? Now, mm -hmm. that would be my personal usage. So then it would be around 60% of the time using the cover display and around 40% of the time using the folded open display. What would you say would your, your usage, ideal usage would be? No, absolutely. It's, it's work in front, party inside. Okay. Straight up. That is, <laughs> I like that. that. <laughs> that is that is it. I mean, I agree because whenever, especially with the, you know, Samsung has that new case now, the one with the strap, that's one I'm using, also has a kickstand. Um, and I found myself just, anytime I want to watch a video, I will watch it on the cover screen. If it's if it's longer than say like a TikTok or watching YouTube, I just open it up and just put it on the kickstand and put it by my desk and, cool. and you know, and that's it done. So to me, I, you're absolutely right. Like, especially for me typing, I have... I, my my thumbs are large, and literally my thumb just goes across and over past the phone itself. That's crazy. <laughs> so it's just hard for me to type with two hands. I have to use one hand to type it. And Saf will tell you, already I'm terrible. Yeah, he's, <laughs> so, he's, he's, it, uh, there's only like I think I'm probably the only guy who can actually understand what he's saying. It's probably me, your wife, and and maybe somebody else. <laughs> I'll say or somebody, right? But it's, yeah. there there are very few limited people that can actually understand what Enabong say because half of it is just gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't need encryption why do you need end-to-end -end encryption just like just write whatever nobody else will understand it just i will <laughs> <laughs> yes but, i should yeah. I, I should go to i should move into the encryption business <laughs> yeah you should do uh but but the thing is my, my point is that i you know a lot of people kind of i, I get some people prefer it, right but for me, if you look at every other competitor, right, whether that be the OnePlus Open, the Honor Magic V2, or now we're going to have the V3 coming up soon, um, or if you even look at the, the, the Vivo X Fold 3 Pro, they all have wider front displays, which are way more usable. And you can use them as a regular smartphone. But then when you want to party and when you want to do something that it's, that's a bit more productive, then you can use that main display. So would you say that ratio of the ideal usage of a foldable phone, 60% on the cover screen, 40% on the big screen? It, it, oh, would, I, you, would you agree? Okay. I, now, I, I do agree, yeah. Now, here's my thing. My usage actually flips on the fold. F flips on the fold. <laughs> if because... On the Fold, Z Fold 6, what I was finding is that I would only be using the cover screen between 30 to 40% of the time. And I would be using the main display around 60 to 70% of the time, purely because the cover screen isn't usable, in my opinion, right, for most things. Now, that kind of switched my usage. And I'm then, 
using a tablet, which I'm then folding rather than using a smartphone, which I'm opening, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of, it kind of flipped the way I was using it. Now, yeah. in turn, that made, that had an impact on my battery life because obviously if you use the large screen more, you're going to be taking a more battery, right? Now, yeah. I'm not saying that, let me just clarify, I'm not saying that the battery life on the Z Fold 6 is bad by any means, it's good, but it's just not, especially if you're using the large screen quite a lot, it does take up a lot of battery and it wasn't as good as my iPhone and my S24 Ultra, which all have bigger batteries, right? Um, yeah. Well, I'm not sure if the iPhone has, but but yeah, this, uh, the S24 Ultra has a four, uh, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, whereas the um, Z Fold 6 only has a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, which isn't mm -hmm. which isn't great, right? So now my point was that if you make the device slightly wider, then you'd be able to fit in a slightly larger battery, right? Yeah. So that yes. that's what, that would my argument. No, absolutely. One of the things that I mentioned, I remember when we had our pre-briefings and we were looking at the device, I'm there with Danny Wingett and we both looked at it and I was like, this needs an extra three millimeters. <laughs> exactly that, because that would actually get you a bigger battery and also an S Pen. Because that, remember, that it's, it, it, is, it is a flip. I'm sorry, it falls open. So which means you can stack the batteries whichever way you want and have the S Pen on one side as opposed to the other, right? Um, yeah. so basically you have just more real estate for that. You know, for me, my, most of my usage is still on the cover display. I'm still close to that 60, 40 ratio. It's, it's a bit more annoying, but I'm still used to that. But I do agree that the times that I've spent, say, watching more content or even just gaming on there or doing anything, or even like just looking at emails and constantly replying to emails directly off that main display. I will see a different battery usage from day to day because my, the way I usually calculate my battery usage, I don't like screen on time. I, don't, I think it's pretty mm. foolish. Um, it's just how I use it from day to day because also all most smartphones nowadays learn your usage. So mm. when you flip it around and I started just kind of using it more with the larger display, I'm seeing, okay, uh, normally I charge it around like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 7 p.m. Oh, okay, cool. Why, why is that? Like, why is it, why is it earlier? And mm. you realize that, you know, like you said, the larger display yeah. is, is doing this. Doing is, this is the thing. Doing. Now with the S Pen, again, like I'm using the S Pen case, which is fine, but you know, you mentioned that you like the weight of the device, right? But then as soon as you've got the case on there, it increases it by about 40 something grams, right? So then yeah. it's no longer, it loses that, right? Whereas if the S Pen was kind of built in, then it wouldn't, you wouldn't have to have, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, the case has gotten thinner and thinner every year, right? But the case, with the S Pen increases the weight and increases the size of an already thick device, right? So for yeah. me, I would want it embedded, right? The other thing I want, wouldn't want the S Pen is for it to work on the front cover display, right? Now I get that they would have to put the digitizer and stuff behind the front display as well, but Honor have done it with the, or, you know, the Porsche design, you can use the their stylus both on the main display as well as the cover display. Because if I wanna make a quick, if I wanna jot something down quickly, I want to do it mm -hmm. on the cover screen. And the other thing, this is like actually a kind of like a unique scenario, yeah? Um, I was at a wedding recently and then, you know, I had like some my nieces and nephews around and stuff and they wanted to try the sketch to image because it's really fun, right? And I'm like giving them the pen on that main display and I'm thinking, oh, can you please like not press too hard on it? Because you know what kids are like, they're like, ah, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh man, only if this worked on the cover screen, because then I wouldn't have to worry about it because then they could yeah. just draw away on the cover screen and I wouldn't have to worry about, oh, are they gonna damage that, um, you know, the, the main display because you're not supposed to press down it too hard, right? It, it gives you a warning when you initially set the device up. So you can't really like dig your nails into anything like that as well. So like, I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, you know, only if it worked on the on the cover display. And a lot of people say to me like, you know, if they want to just quickly jot something down, they don't want to do this, this, this. They just want to like pop it out and then just start noting down. And that's another thing that I think they definitely need to include. Oh no, absolutely. I think, I think you're right. I think, one of the things that annoys me with this device, which we might talk about with this device and the, you know, as well as also the buds is part of me feels like Samsung is not innovating as much as they should, or they're holding the innovation back, which kind of leads me to a recent statement by the head of Samsung, who basically, at least not publicly, but basically stated that he was pissed at the mobile team for copying Apple. That's literally how, <laughs> how it was put out, right? And we know very well that, for instance, a lot of the panels and displays 
that every almost every other foldable manufacturer is using is from Samsung. I can tell you personally, the designs that we've seen, I have seen them were from Samsung Display. The thinness, all that stuff. It, I've already seen it from a division of Samsung. And it's public. It's not like they're yeah. hiding that part. So hmm. why don't we have it in a Samsung device? <laughs> you know, this is the thing. That, that the, the, I totally agree with you. Like if we look at the evolution of the Fold series, right? From the Fold 1 to the Fold 2, big jump, right? Okay, we, ha we had like a tiny screen in the Fold 1 and the Fold 2, it was much larger, much better, etc. right? But then since then, it's, still, it's just been incremental. There, there's not been any drastic changes onto the design. I mean, yes, there's been incremental changes, but there's not been any drastic changes for the design of the Fold 6, right? Uh, yeah. For the Fold series. Now, the other thing that I you know, kind of mentioned was uh, the cameras, right? That's, look, you, you said the camera's really good. I agree, the cameras are really good. But guess what? This device is quite a bit more. Um, I, I believe it's uh, $700 more in the US the, compared to the S24 the, Ultra. Yeah, and in yeah. the UK, it's about um, 550 pounds more compared to the S24 Ultra. That is a price where you could buy a whole other device, right? Okay. Yes. So you are paying significantly more. And I get it because it's a, you know, it's, it's a folding device. You've got two displays, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the cameras should at least match the S24 Ultra, in particular the primary camera, you know, the 200 megapixel primary camera. Why don't we have that on the Z Fold 6? The periscope zoom camera, I kind of understand that, you know, you know, it'd make the device potentially thicker as well. But again, others have done that, right? Maybe you, you design it where you have a slightly bigger camera bump, but then the rest of the device is super thin. So then it kind of, you know, balances it out that way. A few of these things that I think that again, you know, push the Z Fold 6 down when you look at the competition? Oh, no, uh, absolutely. And that's the part that, that I'd say frustrates me because we know Samsung is capable of doing every single thing we mentioned, mm -hmm. fully capable, they can do that, but they are not looking, I don't know whether it's because there's no direct competition within the US for them, or even maybe most of the other markets, even though yes, there are other manufacturers out there, but they don't have that, like, you know, somebody hitting them on the head and going like, okay, we need to make that change. But mm. it also, and also, you know, it's also hard to justify to some people why you should pick up the Z Fold 6 when the price has gone up, especially anyone who's trying to upgrade from last year. Now, if you're, mm. If you're two generations behind, three generations behind, sure. Fair enough. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fair enough. But from last year, it makes no sense. So I think Samsung really has to, and I kind of, I, like I said, I was very happy that the head of Samsung said what he said. Mm. Maybe that jolts the, them to understand yeah. that, hey, look, guys, we're the ones who pushed a lot of innovation in this industry. And right now, Everybody else is beating us at that, you know, and then the last thing, of course, is like fast charging. At this point, I really don't care that much of wireless charging I used to. But the fact that everyone is beating a while at fast charging other than yeah. Apple and Apple could easily just match you or even get slightly higher if they wanted to. So you're second to last in something that yeah. you kind of pushed. <laughs> well, see, the, the thing for me, see, my argument always when it comes to fast charging, right? Um, is that if you've got great battery life, I'm not too fussed about fast charging because guess what? I know it's going to last me throughout the day and then I can just drop it on my wireless charger when I'm going to sleep, I'll wake up, job done, right? So if you have excellent battery life, then I'm not too bothered about fast charging. Guess what? The Z Fold 6 does not have excellent battery life. It might be good, but it's not excellent. Yeah. So guess you should at least give us faster charging if you can't increase the battery size too much, if it's going to increase the size and the weight of the device, right? Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I think now, these are the things that that just, dear man, you know, continue. Yeah. Just. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Uh, obviously, we could carry on. But so my sort of conclusion is that we need a Galaxy Fold 7 Pro or Ultra, right? If it's Samsung, they probably call it an Ultra, right? So next year, because the thing is, there's going to be a lot of people that argue, no, the front screen's fine. We like a smaller front screen, right? There's going to be people saying that, oh, if you increase the front screen um, in terms of make it wider, it's also going to make the main display wider, which is currently, you know, the sweet spot for them. Okay, I understand that. Okay, so when it comes to this, uh, the Z Fold 7, okay, give us the Z Fold 7, but lower the price significantly, around the 1500 mark, right? Okay, Yeah. which uh -huh. is a bit more reachable, right? Now, for the price of this year's Fold 6, right? Give us a Fold 7 Ultra, 
okay? Now the Fold 7 Ultra would have a wider display, right? It would have right. the embedded S Pen. It would have a bigger battery, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it, would, it would have, you know, cameras that would match the um, S25 S Ultra series. Yeah, the S25 Ultra series, right? Now this is a thing now, even if it was, I mean, look, I understand that that might cost them a bit more and stuff like that. But even if it was like around, you know, like you know, up to $2,000 maximum, I think there would be a market for that personally, right? Now, that would be granted that obviously if you, you, you carry on doing what you're doing because you've got a customer base for it, but now you bring in a whole new customer base who are those enthusiasts who want all of these features and you're giving them to, you know, alongside those seven years of updates and all the Samsung AI, Galaxy AI features which you're offering, which others have not yet caught up to. I agree. I, for those four features you mentioned should be it. I think Samsung needs to rethink its philosophy and decide that the Fold, aka which took over the Notes timing, needs to be their best device. Yes. Doesn't mean it takes away from the S24, uh, 20, 24, 25 Ultra, because the Ultra is the best in just a candy bar format. But when exactly. you have the Fold, you now have the best of both worlds, both in candy bar and foldable. Yeah, and, it, and it. I don't think it would cannibalize the sales of the, the S25 Ultra either, because no. remember, it's gonna be for about, you know, around $700 more. So it's just like only people who want the folding screen, right? Essentially, people who want an S25 Ultra, but with a folding display, right, would pay that additional amount for it everybody else would just go ahead and get the S25 Ultra, right? Now, for yeah. those people, you'd be getting, you know, like for people like me and you, I could see myself using that device throughout the year without any cool. issues. Like I'd be, I'd be just, that's it. This is my, this is my go-to. I'm going to use it every day. And you know, like that's what I've been doing with the S24 Ultra, but I, I do miss, I'm not going to lie, since I switched back to the S24 Ultra, I do miss that when I'm kind of showing somebody a picture, like it was, it was kind of default for me. If I'm showing somebody a picture, I would open the display and I would show them like here, look at, look at this, yeah, yeah, <laughs> look at my nice. screen. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it was, it was just one of those things that I kind of got used to. And it's like, you can't display things better in that way. Like, you know, like you've just got double the screen size. It's beautiful. And you know, the, the main screen is really good, right? So mm -hmm. Samsung, listen to us. Give us the Samsung Galaxy Z7 Ultra or Z6 Ultra, if that's going to come later this year or whatever, right? I'm going to take full credit for it. 5%, <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. We have been using them. I've been using them for about a month. How long have you been using them for E? Can you disclose? Longer than that. Longer than that, okay. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. He's being political. All right, let's address the elephant in the room first. Everybody's gonna be saying it in the comments. Everybody has been saying it. AirPods Pro clone. That's what the people say, like in terms of the design, right? Would you agree? Um, partially, yes. The, the stem design is something that Apple basically spearheaded. They're not the first, spearheaded is the best way to put it. Um, but for what they wanted to do and what they've done with these buds is really not the way, honestly. It's, okay. it's a so you, factual thing. And, you're justifying it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, the thing. I, I'll explain. Okay. When, go ahead. I'll explain. No, so you, I, I would that. say that, okay, so the silver ones, right? They, they look they look brilliant. I, I really yes. like the look of the silver ones. They look different enough, right? The white ones, though, like this is the thing, and they sent me the white ones as well. That, come on, Samsung, you could have sent me the silver ones. I'm going to have to buy the silver ones. Um, but the white ones, like when you look at them side by side, you're like, mm, okay, yeah, and you're going to get that comparison. Now, they yeah. have done things to differentiate it. Like I do like the blade lights. I really like the look of those and the fact that, you know, it tells you how much battery you've got just by looking at those lights. You know, it's, it's nice. They shine when you, if you've lost your buds so that you can see it, <laughs> which I need because, you know, this brings me on to my next point, which I actually lost my Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Just moment of silence there for those. Man, you know what? Those were my favorite buds because they they fit in my ear, right? Yeah. And my ears, not many earbuds actually sit inside my ears. The Buds 2 Pro did, okay? Now, the Buds 3 Pro are not bad. I'm gonna give it that. They're not bad. They do stay in my ears, but not as well as the Buds 2 Pro did. What about you? Um, so I've noticed for me, the best way for me to actually make them fit in my ears is if I... Let me actually pull the right ones out here. If I take them and then I twist them 
upwards. Like it has to point forward up uh, okay. to fit oh. best. Yeah. Okay. Upwards. Yeah. Okay. Upwards a little bit. It it kind of it almost feels like it locks in into place okay. a little bit. One of the things I noticed is I think it's because of the slippery nature of the material. You remember the Buds 2 Pro have a more like textured feel to it? So I think certain versions did because the one I did was still glossy, but um, yeah. they just because yes. of the design, like kind of because they sit in your ears and they're not hanging out, they did fit better. Would, okay. which, which ones did you have? Did you have the white or black ones? Black. Okay. So the, the, the black ones were a little bit glossy, the white ones were had a little bit of texture. The black ones for me kept on like moving a little bit. The white ones stayed like okay, completely at least for me. So, um, but yeah, so in terms, I think in terms think of in terms sitting of in your ear, buds two pro or buds three pro, two pro, two pro still fit. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah. that, that's fine. So we're on the same page there. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in, in in that aspect, I think it does. I think one of the biggest things that at least for me I enjoyed is the audio improvements. Mm, Hands 100%. down, 100%. And the reason I said that there is two ways of doing this properly is you can go Sony's route and it becomes bigger. You know how the Sony Buds always tend to look bigger because Sony has dual drivers. These have dual drivers in there, uh, which of course take up a lot of space, mm. which allow you to put the microphones on the stem. So yes. that's, that's one of the things why the design, design language is just definitely different. Yeah, now, so this is the thing, so like because of that, I, ha I have to admit the call quality is better. And that's obviously just physics, having a stem that kind of, you know, goes down and it's closer to your vocals, it's gonna just pick those up better rather than if it's all the way just in your ear. So I agree that call quality, you know, with the mics is better, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, but I mean, just generally, you know, as you were saying, audio quality is crisp. It's very, very good. Um, some of the best, I would say. Would, would, would you agree when it comes to earbuds? Oh, yeah. Some of the best out there? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's, it's what, what up there. Um, I, I did watch your video, but, you know, for your, for your sort of, for the, for the viewers here who don't watch your videos. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> AirPods Pro or Galaxy Buds 3 Pro? Ga Ga audio Galaxy Buds. Buds. Okay. Galaxy Buds. All right. That's and, good to know. And also an audio file. Uh, the extra aspect is you have built-in EQs that you can customize. Because even mm. I customize, I customize my EQs whenever I can. And finally, the Samsung has brought it in. Samsung, you should just have presets. You know, you had like rock, dynamic, or whatever. Now you can customize it, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So Amazing. for that alone, it's already better. Okay, noise cancellation, ANC, active noise cancellation. I say the about the same, okay. but. I will tell, I will say again, going back to your fit, if, if it's not, if it kind of moves or swiggles a little bit, I've noticed that I lose, I lose a lot off. So I always have to, that's why I, when I realized I had to tighten it up, then it's fine. But yeah. Okay. All right. That's, that's interesting. Cause yeah, again, ANC is brilliant. Battery life is also excellent. I mean, you know, you've got around with ANC on, you've got around six hours on the buds and then you've got 26 hours in the case. So like case. once you've charged the case up fully, and you know you're on your way. You don't have to think about charging them up um, for yeah. for a while. Um, so yeah. Now the price though, two hundred and twenty pounds in the UK, and two hundred and fifty dollars in the US. Yeah, they are, they're they're going for that that top tier premium pricing. Honestly, I think Samsung is is doing it for two reasons. One is to remind people that this is you know as the same as AirPods because AirPods come out at two fifty whenever they launch. Hmm. Um, and also gives them more wiggle room whenever they have discounts or sales or anything throughout the year. So it always hits that one ninety nine price point, which most people will jump at. You know, at least double move mm. at that price point. I think it's a smart move uh, because what I've re what I found out in, in the air, in the audio space, and this is I blame Qualcomm, not in a bad way. So it's not your fault, Qualcomm. <laughs> when Qualcomm released the um, Snapdragon Sound, the new ch they had a bunch of chips. They announced like, you know, I think it was like a year ago, two years ago, the series of chips yeah. that brought in a lot of good low end, low price earbuds. So that's why you have things like the Nothing Buds at like ninety nine dollars that sound really good. Mm. Uh, they were some at like you know J Labs is now the big thing, and they're like fifty dollars, and they sound pretty decent, right? Yeah. Mm. So. 
it's really modeled the space where if you're someone like Samsung, you really have to go, no, we're here. We're up here. Yeah. We're up here. And I think that's the only way you have to do it or else people will go, well, I would just spend 50, 100 bucks. Well, the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, you can pick them up for now about 100 pounds, which I think is a good deal for some very good if uh, so if you do want to save a bit and you don't like the stem design like i do then you might because i might have to get another pair man because i just miss <laughs> i just miss them so much and i actually i actually put earphones on when i'm sleeping right before i go to sleep i put on some this is my way of getting to sleep right um do you, put, do, you, do, you, do you listen to audiobook or uh no i just put on some documentaries about space okay and i just kind of doss off <laughs> Or like I mean, something I, like no, I don't blame you. I'm the same way. I I listen to I I listen I listen to a lot of audiobooks that are all are space operas. If there's no starships or galaxies, I'm not listening to it. So it's the same thing. I just put it on and then it takes me. To and then you just those of and you just go off into the stars <laughs> and then you stream. So that's that's my way. Now the problem is with if you've got anything with stems, you just can't like if you do lean over. Whereas the buds, I mean, yeah, I mean you can still feel them. But if you've got a soft and a pillow, they're kind of like, whereas with these, it's not, you can't really do that, which yeah. I don't like. So, um, so yeah, so that's something that I'll see. But anyway, I mean, you know, overall positive reviews. Now, there was some quality control issues. There's, there's been some talk about um, the, I think it was the ear tips that were like breaking apart and stuff. Yeah. So there was, um, there was, I've not had any issues with mine. But um, no, apparently either. some users have reported them and then like the sales are pushed back. Right now, I was just looking on Samsung's website. If you do pre-order these right now in the US, they'll come on the 28th of August and on the 4th of September in the UK. So there does seem to be a bit of, you know, um, quality control issues that have been addressed in the background. So just something to bear in mind. But I've not had those and neither has Enabong. So just um, from our perspective, that's not something we've experienced. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad at least they responded quickly to it, which is always good. Yeah, of course. Next thing, Galaxy Ring. Now, I've had this for about a couple of weeks now. And, you know, we were talking about sleeping early on. And this is obviously supposed to be the ideal sleep tracker rather than having a watch, right? Now, one thing I got to say, like in terms of the design quality and like, you know, you know how it feels like a normal ring, spot on, right? Like it doesn't feel like I'm wearing something different. It feels like a regular, you know, like a regular ring, like as I would be doing. And you know, it's titanium, so it's quite durable. I've been, I, I was, I was at the gym today, and I was wearing it while during my workout. No problems whatsoever. Th thank you. Yeah, because um, you know, like that's <laughs> that's something that I think that's absolutely fine. IP68 water and dust resistant. It's also scratch resistant, so um, it's 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 quite interesting, right? Uh, the other day, um, and my South Asian uh, viewers will know this, right? We had one of those um, big pots, you know, it's like it's silver sort of <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, pots. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. those, right? And Where they make all the it. rice and stuff, right? Yeah. I was carrying that, right? Um, and then I looked at my ring and then I noticed some silver on it. And I was like, oh no, has the black coating um, rubbed off? On, and I was like, is that paint? And it was like, oh no. And then I rubbed it and it just came off. So it was basically, it, it, the, <laughs> it the, the friction, but the, the, the titanium was fine. But it was, it was actually a little bit of a panic. I was like, oh, this is going to be something good to cover in my review. But, you know, I've got the black oh, wow. version. It didn't, uh, it, it, it didn't damage it whatsoever. So I was pretty impressed by that because it was, you know, it was essentially metal against metal, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it essentially ended up damaging that big pot, right? But my ring was fine, right? And I still those, don't those see any Those pots scratches. are usually indestructible, man. I know, man. I know. So there you go. So that's a testament to how good it is, right? Now, I got to say, like, one of my favorite things about the ring, right? I'm going to come on to some of the negatives, but one of my favorite things is the charging case, right? The charging case has a battery built in as well. So you can, like, just top it up on there and it's just going to recharge on there without you having to, you know, it's going to give you two to three full charges. You're not going to have to, um, you know, plug it in because that's one of the problems that I had with the Ultra Human ring is that if I forgot my... Oh. Um, yeah, you try to like, like, plug it in and this and that, right? Whereas with this, I don't actually, like I could be here and I could leave the case charging at home and it's fully charged wirelessly. And then I could just pop this in when I'm in the shower and then boom, right? It's, 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 it's a very, very good really? thing to have, I'd say, right? Yeah. So that's what I really like about it. I like the compact size. 
tracking seems to be relatively okay, right? In terms of um, steps and things like that. I'm not somebody who's too active, but like in terms of heart rate monitoring and like just general, that's been fine. Now, before I get onto the sleep tracking side of things, what about you, Enabong? I want to hear your thoughts so far. Um, I've used it for about a week plus. I have the, I have a size 12, which has a slightly bigger battery. So it's actually okay. more than the, more than six days. Um, I've used it to work out three times so far. It's great to work out with people who don't want to work out with it. Or some, I know some creators as well as Marquez have said, like he didn't really want to work out with it. It's mm. fine. It's absolutely fine. Especially if you're using dumbbells, kettlebells, all that stuff. My workouts are usually involved with all that. Now, uh, what I've noticed from my workouts is the auto workout started. So what I've tried to do this week, I usually carry two phones with me. So when I went into the gym, I left, because this is paired to my fold, I left my fold in the car and I just took mm -hmm. my regular S24. So it's not connected to the fold. I was like, I wanted to register my workouts just mm -hmm. without me doing it. Because that's what I really would love this to do. So far, it did that. Except one workout where it registered it twice, but also because one was kind of cardio. And then, and then I had like a little break in between and then I started my workout. So it felt like, which kind of made sense. So I was okay. impressed with, with that breakdown. Um, I haven't charged it yet. So... <laughs> That's the battery life. I, I, that part I don't know. Um, but overall, the only time, the, I, to be fair, I've only looked at my sleep tracking once. I haven't looked at the other days yet. It was direct, it was accurate to the T in the sense that, in the sense that when I say mean by this T was, I know I went to bed around 2.30 AM that day. Okay. Uh, because I was, I was on my phone. <laughs> I saw the time. Yeah. I was like, I need to go to bed. So I probably fell, fell off around 2, 2.35, 2 2.40. Okay. And I woke up at 9 because I picked up my phone and it was 9 a.m. And Sleep Track had said it was roughly around that, which I was like, okay, this is okay. this is on point. Um, but yeah, um, I, I, have, I have to... I have to mesh it with, I have to pair it with other, compare it to other sleep tracking sleep things tracking. Just, to, okay. just to see how it works, but that was fine. So here's my thing with the sleep tracking. Initially, I was actually very impressed with it because um, my sleep patterns are very different to a regular person. I'm not just somebody who goes there and sleeps and wakes up, right? I take time to go to sleep. So I'll be, be listening to uh, watching space videos or whatever, right? Okay, so it takes me time to go to sleep. Then I get to sleep and then I'll wake up for morning prayers. So, you know, there's going to be that interruption in the middle. Then I go back to sleep, which takes me a while. And then I'll wake up. I'll probably be in my phone for a little bit and then I'll actually wake up, right? Now, what I do like is there's a, there's a whole breakdown, right? So there's the time in bed, right? So this is the time that you spent in bed, right? Yeah. Then it's got your sleep latency. Then it's got your sleep time, right? So when do you actually sleep? Because obviously if you get up and go to the toilet or whatever, that's gonna, it's not going to count that, which is good. Then it's got your actual sleep time, right? And it, and it calculates you, you know, how much you actually slept, right? Now, generally, I was thinking it was quite accurate. But today morning, I was quite annoyed because when I look at my sleep time, it says I went to sleep at 10 past one, which is roughly about right. I woke up at about 10 past four, you know, for praise. And then it says I went back to sleep about 4.30. Now, it took me a little bit longer to go to sleep, but fair enough. But then it says I woke up at 9.30 a.m., right? That is incorrect because I actually woke up about 8.45 and I remember like I was actually on my phone, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I looked at the time, it's 8.45. I'm on my phone for about, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes. Then I actually get up and then I look at my phone and it's, it's telling me here that I was, my sleep was till 9.35. So it didn't actually detect that I woke up, which I was kind of annoyed about a little bit, right? Now that might just be a one-off, but that's something that I have noticed. Generally speaking, I think it's, kind of there, maybe, you know, give or take 10%, right? But that was one thing that I was a little bit worried about. Now, having said that, it is much better than what I found with my personal experience with the um, Ultra Human, because the Ultra Human would sometimes say that, I'd be watching, you know, sat there watching TV or a movie and it'd say, oh, we detected a short nap. And I was like, what do you mean you de detected a short nap? I'm just sitting <laughs> watching a movie. Let me watch a movie in peace, man. Uh, let me rest for a little bit. So that's one thing that I will say now. I haven't used the Aura Ring and there's another there's another one as well. So I haven't used those, so I can't compare them to those. So far, I would say that the experience on the Galaxy Ring has been quite positive overall. 
I'm still unsure if the sleep tracking is spot on because that's what I would want it to be. I'm not sure if it's just because of my situation, but that's what I have found so far that it's not 100% accurate. Maybe it's about you know 90% accurate, but it's not 100% accurate for sleeping. So one of the things that I've realized with these that might be an issue is if you think about it, all the sensors are on one half or one quarter of the ring, right? It's kind of mm -hmm. like at the bottom half. And you wear the ring, it rotates out. Now, if the sensor comes up to the top of your skin, it's not getting mm -hmm. anything or it's getting mm -hmm. poor information here as yes. opposed to this side. So Samsung has this little dent indicator there, which yeah. I tend to place that and rotate, especially when I'm working out, I just kind of feel it and I rotate it. And usually I, I think it, it helps to get my workouts correctly. I've never really checked on it for sleep, but I think that might be the problem, even with the Aura Ring too as well, just because a lot of them, the sensors are in just one section. So um, I have to say that anyway. with the with this, I do like that indentation because it makes sure that I always, you know, have it on right. And I have always had it on right, which is something yeah. that I do like because I think with the ultra humid ring, there, it was just plain. So you didn't actually know, you know. Oh, yeah. Exactly. At, at night, I'll be in bed and my wife is like, why is your hand blinking? <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> it's trying to read and it's on the yeah. top side of my thing. And she's like, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, oh, sorry, it's, it's, it's my bad. Yeah, well, with this, with, with this one, you've got the indentation at the bottom, which is, I think, perfect. And, you know, it's easy to put on the right way, should we say. And it's not, you know, that, it's not, it's not a thing, but it stands out on a thing. And plus, generally speaking, you'll be seeing the top of the ring. So I, I do like that as well, that, you know, it makes it easier to. And if you've got a snug fit, like for me, I like a fit where I can take it off when I want to, because, you know, when I'm washing my hands, when I'm preparing for prayers and stuff, I want to make sure that I'm washing my hands properly and also getting that side. So I always take it off when I go to the bathroom and stuff, right? So I want it to be something that I can take off easily, but is also quite snug. And I'm actually quite lucky because I think I found the perfect size, right? Um, I think this is a size eight or nine, but it fits like perfectly for me, right? So I would say, make sure you t try the sizing kit and you find something that fits on snug, but it's not too tight. So like try to find that what, that balance because if you find yeah. something that's too loose, it's not gonna track everything properly because it's not always in full contact with the skin uh, and it could also fall off. And then if you find something that's too tight, then it's gonna be impossible to take off. And I know some people just don't take the ring off ever, but I mean, I'm sorry, but I do. <laughs> if I need to wash my hands, I'm gonna take my ring off. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it, it's just very important to get the sizing of your ring uh, down. Um, I actually use this to wash like dishes, you know, whatever I'm like doing dishes and stuff like that. I just wanted to see if, what will happen. You know, I know it's IP68, but just to make sure. Yeah, it's that's his, fi uh, it's fine when washing dishes. Uh, Edibon has to that. wash the dishes at home. That's his, that's his duty. He has to do that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's whoever actually- When he's in trouble, it. when he's in trouble. No, actually to be fair, it's I, uh, I would say I, I do, I do do dishes. Um, like mostly the pots and pans, just because my wife is doing most of the cooking and then this dishwasher does most of the dishes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I was, I was going to say, man, it's, it's uh, 2024, man. I'm sure you've got a Samsung dishwasher. No, no, those, those, <laughs> those, silver, those silver pots do not put them in the dishwasher. Oh, they, they don't even fit in the dishwasher, man. Those yeah, they, number one, yeah, they don't. But it's yeah. it's also not good for it in the dishwasher as well. So yeah. yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, I'll let you off there. But yeah, no, uh, for me, man, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I am super, super. When it comes to dishes, they all gather in my sink and then they eventually go in the dishwasher, and that's the only thing that does it. If if there's something that's not dishwasher friendly, then it's not SAF friendly. I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> I literally checked. I make sure. Okay, is this dishwasher dishwasher friendly? Because if it's not, I'm not. I'm not buying it. I'm not getting it. But but anyway, uh, <laughs> Galaxy Ring price four hundred dollars, four hundred pounds. What do you think? It's fine with me. I, I know a lot of people were talking about it should be cheaper and stuff like that. Is that honestly competition requires the price to drop? And currently for Samsung, not because the other rings out there, there is no competition. So yeah. that's that's the main thing. Um, I hope, I'm sure Apple will have a device like this in the future, which will force yeah. some interesting competition, as you've seen with the with the Galaxy Watch Ultra, where it is two hundred dollars cheaper than mm. the Apple Watch. Okay, know? so that's that's what competition does. Well, we'll see. But um, at the at the time, I'd say because there is no subscription, so what you pay is what you will pay four hundred pounds, four hundred dollars, and that's it, right? 
Because of that, I'd say that the price is okay. I'm sure there's gonna be some sales, there's gonna be some discounts, there's gonna be some Black Friday stuff, whatever. We'll drop some links below anyway, if you're interested, but I do think you might be able to grab some decent deals once the device has been out for like a good few months, right? So mm -hmm. watch out for those, but because there's no subscription, I'm gonna say that, you know, the 399 mark is, is okay. Yeah, I agree. All right, now for our next segment, we're gonna try something. We're not, I don't even know if this is gonna work, right? So we are going to switch over to the Apple Vision Pro and we're gonna use our personas. So we'll see you there. All right. So here we are. These are our personas. And uh, it took us a little bit of time to set this up because not only did we want to set this up, but we also wanted to record it. So, you know, you guys could see what we were seeing. Yeah. Now, the thing is, though, one thing that I have to mention is that what I'm seeing is way clearer. Like, you know, the persona of you that I'm seeing E is way sharper than what you will probably see in the recording of this video. Uh, yeah, the persona is sharper. Um, I think one thing I'll mention though is because I've had the Vision Pro longer than you have, the first set of personas didn't look like me. I, it took a lot of tweaking. This really looks like you. So the, the update with the beta uh, yeah. really is really more refined. Well, the thing is, I mean, the one thing that they don't have here is sunglasses. So that's some feedback. Apple, you need to add sunglasses so I can add them on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I can add normal glasses, but not sunglasses. So that's something because, you know, if, if I'm speaking to somebody like this, I'll be like, who is this guy? Yeah. But um, it is like what, what's interesting is it does look like the person that you're speaking to. And it does like, I don't know, like there is that sort of uncanny valley, I know. But like generally, I think it's actually not too bad. Like, you see, your sides kind of on off, definitely. Right. Because mm -hmm. obviously it's only scanning the front of your face. So your sides um are of but also the other thing that um i mean one advantage i guess is that you know it tells you when you're scanning your face to like look your best right so if you want to put your makeup on or something make sure your b is looking uh you know sharp then you scan yourself because that's what's going to be your persona throughout right yeah so what was funny is because i think when i recorded it my beard was slightly bent so i don't know if you can notice but it's like slightly off so then i was looking at myself in the persona and i was trying to like fix it and it just <laughs> wasn't doing anything it, it looks like you have like a just a sharp beard that goes like it looks like like it's like one of those you know how like it the old like uh 1950s movies when they would show like ancient egyptians or something with just like a uh, I, I, I call it like a pharaoh my, beard. my ancestors yeah, it, something like that. <laughs> well um okay so vision pro i've had it for i'd say about like just over a month now you've had it for a lot longer right yes uh, if you were just to summarize you know after having it for that amount of time what would you say um i think it's early that's my summary i think it's i i like the ideas of what samsung has brought <laughs> we've been talking about samsung all this episode so that's why <laughs> sorry i like i like what apple has brought to the table which has spurred a lot of interest uh on you know just every corner plus you mm -hmm. have people like meta now looking to do some step ups you know yeah. it's it's good excitement for the genre um for me it's one that i just don't use that much because it is for me feels very heavy to wear uh I, okay i said that in my review um and even though there are some of the benefits you know i do I know some people who still use it on uh, on a regular basis and they talk about the fact that, you know, they have like a 108 inch screen to watch content. And I always tell them, I was like, yeah, but I have a 75 inch TV and I don't have to wear anything. That's where for me, you know, there's that difference yeah. there. I mean, obviously there's the argument of you can't take that 75 inch screen with you everywhere, right? Yeah. Whether you're on a plane or something True. like that. So that's something. So, I mean, you know, for me overusing it the past, I mean, the first thing I want to say is, you know, Apple's usually the one that has all of their products released at the same time. So if there's a new iPhone, it comes out at the same time throughout, right? There's no staggered um, release. But for the Vision Pro, it was six months later, right? Yeah. Uh, so one of the big things was is that when it came to my content, like I was just like, what am I offering different? Because everybody who watches my content, you know, watches Marquez's content, watches Justine's content, watches your content. So they've already seen 
multiple opinions of this product. So they're not going to just come for me six months later. I mean, if it was a few weeks, fair enough, right? So I kind of focused on doing like a short on uh, the five things that you might not know. And there were some interesting things like, for instance, you know, that the your persona, if you are using a spatial persona, a spatial persona is where it kind of, you know, feels like, you know, like say if I was talking to E, he would be right next to me. Mm -hmm. So that would be something um, uh, quite interesting that it would be true to your height, right? So it's got the sensors to figure out what your height is. So you can't fake your height. <laughs> I mean, you can stand on a stool, I'm sure. But there's things like that, which you might know. You can check that video out, YouTube short, as well as, um, you know, on Instagram and stuff. So that's kind of like the angle that I took. But in terms of doing a full-on review, I couldn't. But some of the things that I can mention, I totally agree that it is a bit too heavy in your face, right? Yeah. And for me, any more than half an hour, and I just start getting very uncomfortable, and I just want to take it off, right? So that's something that I find. Again, caveat, that is a first-gen product. Now, one thing that I will say that's a huge positive about the Vision Pro is just how easy it is to use, right? If you give it to somebody who's like not used one of these things before, they don't need to get used to any controls. They just go through that quick demo and boom, they're ready to go, right? Yeah. And I think that is something that's very, very um, unique, the way that Apple's in it. The resolution and everything, very, very good. Um, I think that a few generations down when these are, this is a lot smaller, a lot more compact, I can see myself using a lot, especially when I'm traveling in its current state. I mean, even carrying it around, right? That uh, the case that it comes with, I don't know why. Why is it so creased? Did they did they tell you why it was so creased? Did they tell anybody? No idea. I, I felt they were going for like a NASA space look, you know, like that. You know how like, like whenever they pack stuff into the space spaceship, they're all kind of like soft multi-layered yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like it I mean, whatever it is it just looks like look, everybody that I've shown it to they're like oh that looks so bad it, it, it was funny it's like looking at your, your facial expression even though it doesn't really give expressions but you had like this <laughs> deadpan look like <laughs> right <laughs> well the, this is the thing look so I'm talking to you like it doesn't feel like after, especially after a little bit it doesn't feel like it's weird right No, it no. feels like I'm talking to you yeah. right? as, as if we were having a video call or something like that and, you know, if you are in your pajamas and you want to have a meeting, you can do that now. So I guess that's another advantage. But I'd like to say that, you know, with this, with the Personas, the new, the version two of Personas or whatever version it is, the newer one, it is pretty good, I would say, right? Yeah. Now, what you guys would be seeing on the podcast, uh, the recording is being recorded off a Mac. So this is not exactly what you'd be seeing. Um, it's very hard to capture this. We did try to screen record, but then it shakes around all over the place. So, yeah. you, you know, it's not... Yeah, yeah, you guys will see some of that, just like what it yeah. looks like screen recording. But you're right, in general, you, it's better to just kind of record off the Mac. Yeah, but, um, you know, I, I would agree as well that um, even though I've had it for a month, I only find myself using it occasionally. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me, let me put the Vision Pro on right now. It's not something that I'm picking up every day, which is ideally what I want to be doing. So um, I think, in summary a great version one of a product and very, very cool piece of tech that some of which we haven't seen before, especially with the hand gestures and controls and how easy they are and how natural they feel. Um, and just the quality of what you see through these, um, like when you're watching a video, movie stuff, it's very, very cool. But I think physically for me, it's just still too heavy. Like I, um, Actually, I had to get a different eyepiece. That's another thing. Make sure you find the right fit. But even after I found the right fit, I still feel it on my face. Now, you can even use the uh, one that goes over your head, yeah. the strap that comes. That will make it a little bit better. But again, it's still, in, in my opinion, it's just a bit too heavy and it just needs to, to, to come down. Uh, one thing I will add, though, is one thing I do like is the um, spatial audio with the speakers. Uh, it sounds, it really does a really good job, especially the positioning and conversation. It sounds like Saf is in the room talking to me now. That's yeah. one of the best things about, at least to me, that's one of the best things about this product is that spatial audio here is the way I like spatial audio. Not on any other device. I'm not a big fan of it. I think on this device, it really fits because you are also visually in a spatial environment. So yeah. it, it kind of just lends to that that pretty well. Yeah. I mean, cool piece of tech. And uh, let's see. I mean, we'll see with uh, Vision OS uh, version 2 and see, you know, what kind of changes come. Maybe we'll do some coverage there as well. But uh, interesting product nevertheless. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to what the Vision Pro, Pro. 
2 will be like on the Vision Pro 3 going forward. Question, speaking on that, do you think, this is a question for you, do you think Apple will go the route of the Meta Ray-Bans? That's really blown up and done really well. Uh, giving more AR with maybe some of the Vision Pro elements to it. Do you think that's something that Apple might dabble into that, to make more know. sense? I don't know, because um, I think that's like, you know, obviously, for, I think that's a bit too basic for Apple, like in terms of like just Ray, Meta Ray-Bans, right? I think for them, you know, they've got something which is the Vision Pro and they've really kind of like, you know, made it, like it's made it out like it's, you know, the revolutionary new thing. And then it's just like, I, I think it'd be quite a bit of a cut down. I think they'll continue developing this and it will get better and better. However, I don't think we, I, 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 I don't assume we're going to be getting a new version each year, right? Because no. it, the, the type of technology it is, I'm assuming we're going to be getting one every two to three years, right? But I mean, I, I can't wait for the Vision Pro 2 to come out when it's like, you know, potentially half the weight and it's like, okay, now we're talking. See, I, I have a different mindset. I, I'm i not too keen on Vision Pro 2 just because uh, using I use the Meta Rebands quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm happy, you know, looking at what ChatGPT does and even the improvements we've seen with Siri. Is that if I have that on my, my glasses, a lot of the stuff that I want, I can do it on there. Now, if you add like a visual element to it, I'm sure that that can be done. Their company's already working on that. But just the voice assistant alone, like an improved Siri, a chat GPT, or even a Gemini, like that to me would be, would do much more to mm. make it feel just more connected, and especially to your iPhone, because it's, you know, you can connect it to your iPhone, do things with it that way. I think that might be a more exciting realm and also just more acceptable for people in general, because even yeah. though you go half the size, most people will still be like, well, but I'm still wearing this headset as opposed to, oh, now it's now I'm fashionable, I'm cool, and then I've got all this other bells and whistles in there. Hmm. I mean, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they do. But uh, I mean, again, this right now, the Vision Pro is something that's very new for them as well. Yeah. So they're probably going to hold on to it for a little bit. Let's see. Let's see what they do. Cool. But yeah, guys, let's know, let us know what you guys think of this. I mean, we could just do the podcast like this all the time. Just, just <laughs> I mean, to set up everything, the lights and stuff in the studio, we just do it like this. <laughs> that would be an advantage. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, don't forget to leave a rating, like, subscribe. We're almost on 50,000 subscribers, by the way, on the podcast channel on YouTube. Yes. So I know we've not been very consistent in the past couple of years and stuff, but you know that's really good to see that the growth is still there and it's still doing well. So yeah, thank you for everybody that's been watching and listening. And uh, yeah, we will see you in September. Well, tech Temba, when it's going to be back to back. So yeah, it's lots of news, lots of news in tech in September. Uh, some personal news as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep you posted. Looking forward to it. All right, guys, this is Saf on Super Saf Speak with... <laughs> I'm bringing the Vision Pro here. Uh, this is Saf on Super Saf Speaks with my co-host. Thunder E from Border Work. And we'll see you next time. Bye. I hope this is recorded by the way.